today I'm going to be giving you a timeless pick a card tale reading and there are going to be three groups for you to choose from. If you're watching this at the time of upload, then there might be some Gemini related themes since we're in that astrological season right now. However, for the most part, these are timeless messages and what I always say is, what matters is when this video shows up in your reality. We take that as a sign that you're ready to hear the message or, or that there is a message in there for your current situation. Then we want to really just follow our intuition to pick the messages that resonate and leave what doesn't. These are collective general readings after all, so really take what resonates and leave what doesn't. And in order for us to better follow our intuition, why don't we start with a guided meditation first? This is going to be a really short meditation so you can get centered and grounded. Then we'll look at the cards and have you pick the right reading for you today. I have my singing bowl here, so I'm going to ring this three times. With each ring, take a deep breath in and a complete exhale out. And just take this time to get into your body and ground, ground into your seat, connect to your heart center. Soften your gaze, relax the space between your eyebrows, relax the jaw, lower the shoulders, relax the arms and the legs. and sink into your seat. Welcome gravity and embrace the sensation of being held, being supported. Connect to feeling, your emotions, And now, if your eyes were closed, you can open them now and look at the three groups before you. For group one, we have pineapple calcite. Group two is citrine. Group three is amethyst. Which group stands out to you? Which group do you feel drawn to? Which group is calling to you? Go with your first option, your gut feeling. You don't have to overthink this. There really is no right or wrong answer. If you feel drawn to more than one group, you're welcome to listen to more than one reading. 
there are likely messages within all these readings that could serve you. Once you've chosen your group, you can go down to the timestamps below and click on your reading and I'll see you over there. If you chose group 1, Pineapple Calcite, then this reading is for you. Okay, group 1. So I was actually filming your reading earlier, but then I noticed the mic wasn't even on, so I'm refilming it now, and I already have your cards out, so I'm just going to start with your current energies and go straight into your reading. We're going to be using the Light Seers deck to start with, and then I think I'll call on the Osho Sen Tarot deck, as well as the Fortunate Tarot Poetry book. So, we're going to start with your current energies. First, you have the Nine of Wands, followed by the High Priestess. And I really like this combination. I'll explain to you why. So, the Nine of Wands suggests that you're currently feeling pretty worn down, quite exhausted, and depleted. You are trying to hold on to the last bit of hope and faith left in you. You're really trying to hold on in hopes that things will soon begin to turn out for the better. So maybe your physical reality has been quite demanding recently, or you're going through some emo emotional turmoil. Or this could be a spiritual crisis where you're feeling lost and confused. And I want to say that it's really good that you're trying to hold on to faith. That you're still, you know, trying to remain strong despite everything that's going on. And I say that because you have the High Priestess. This suggests that... Deep down, some part of you knows the bigger picture. There is a knowing, subconsciously, that everything you're going through has a purpose. There is an energetic reason, and you're tapped into that energetic reason, even if it's purely subconscious. So you might not be consciously aware of what you're going through and why you're going through it, but subconsciously, there's a part of you that's tapped into the bigger picture and the deeper meaning behind everything that's going on. And the High Priestess is a major arcana card, so this is also a spiritual lesson that you're supposed to fully embody and integrate at this time. And the High Priestess always invites us to turn inwards, to embrace and consider our inner mysteries, to work with the energetic reality at the 5D level, as some say. So tap into the energies, work with what's unspoken and what cannot be seen, work with the energies. You also have the star card, which is very much also about faith and hope. The star comes after the tower, so after we have this intense event of dissolution and letting go, we then go to the star, which is about healing, rejuvenation, and regeneration. This is the time we take in retreat, in softness and gentleness and compassion. 
that allows us to restore our faith and hope in life and in the universe. So you're currently being asked to really retreat into yourself, to take this time to reconnect to the universe and find the synchronicities again. And if you can do that, if you can embrace the softness and healing energies of the star, you can expand on the withering hope <laughs> within the Nine of Wands. You also have the King of Cups, and this tells us that this period in your life is really about emotional mastery, and that's something you should be focused on at this time. And emotional mastery isn't about controlling, avoiding, or suppressing your emotions, right? It's about being able to accept the fluidity of your emotions and ability to be flexible with them. In the original, I shouldn't say original, in the Rider Waits illustration of the King of Cups, we see a man on his throne in the middle of an ocean with waves crashing against his throne and he's completely unbothered. And that's the kind of image that I want you to have in your mind about emotional mastery. It's being able to remain grounded, centered, still and present despite all the emotions that you may experience. So you don't have to fear your emotions or push them away. You can actually experience them fully with presence and not be swayed. And that's the wisdom of the King of Cups. So that's your current energies. Now let's look at advice that Spirit has for you. So we'll start with Two of Swords. The Two of Swords tells us that you're feeling blindfolded at this time, like you can't really see the road ahead. You may be feeling as if you're at a crossroads and you need to make a decision. And so it's like being this woman blindfolded with two birds pulling her into very opposing directions. And if you're feeling like that, the advice is to embrace it, to accept it. You're not supposed to know the road ahead just yet. You're not supposed to know how things will turn out that would defeat the purpose of this period for you and what you're supposed to learn during this period. So you're really asked to just embrace the unknowing. And I think this pairs very nicely with the High Priestess that we got earlier because the High Priestess doesn't see, right, in the 3D. The High Priestess knows energetically. And so she can be blindfolded she'll, and she'll keep her eyes closed, <laughs> but she knows. And so in this situation of feeling like you're at a crossroads and you're not seeing the path ahead, it's okay if you're blindfolded. If you can't see external guidance and follow external guidance, turn inwards, follow internal guidance connect to your intuition, connect to energy, follow the synchronicities, listen to the universe, restore your faith in a higher power, and let that guide you. So, you're not supposed to know the road ahead, and that will teach you a lot. 
the sooner you learn to embrace it, the sooner you will move forward and eventually get to know <laughs> your path. You also have the Six of Pentacles. And what I get here is, well, the Six of Pentacles is about sometimes giving. It's about restoring balance. This is also a very altruistic card. And what I'm getting for you with this is you are working to restore internal balance and that will come from service, that will come from holding space for those that you love, for attending to their emotions, their needs at this time, um, to extend compassion outwards. And I don't say that lightly, I'm usually the person who advocates for self-care, even if it appears self selfish. But in this situation, I think some service will help you restore the balance you're looking for internally. Sometimes we um, are so focused on our own issues that actually gets us deeper into the problem. And when we're able to see ourselves reflected in other people and serve them, that, you know, moves energy and it paves the way. So give your time and energy and space, hold space for those that you love, see yourself reflected in other people, and focus on service in the name of balance, restoring balance. I literally waited like five hours to film because they're just fireworks nonstop today. It's a holiday in Canada. And I thought they would stop by now. It's getting quite late. Um, I hope there aren't any more. <laughs> okay, continuing with advice we have temperance. So I think this is the balance that I tapped into earlier. There's a restoring of balance happening so that you can walk the middle path. And you see that in this card with the sun and the moon. There's a transmutation, alchemy happening. And you are supposed to walk the middle path that this angel represents. And as you alchemize, transmute, and restore balance, make sure that you're being temperate, as the card suggests. Be patient with yourself and other people. Take your time with your words and actions. And really feel things out. Make sure you are... You're holding stillness and presence before taking action. So, yeah, with, with temperance, I really want to say that this is a good time to be patient, to watch over your words and actions so you're not doing anything impulsively or rashly, but you're just taking things as they come, but with a lot of mindfulness a lot of care and attention. So that's the temperance card. And now we have possible outcomes if you were to follow this advice. First we have the three of pentacles. And this tells me that you might get into a collaborative project or just simply collaborative experience with somebody that matters to you a lot in your life. This could be your partner, um, someone, a potential partner, or family member, friend. In terms
terms of love, being collaborative is one of the best ways to build a strong foundation for the relationship. And so, you know, if this is romance that you want to build on, seek collaboration, seek teamwork, and learning from each other. Of course, if this is family, friends, again, you know, we want to have good foundations with them too. So seek learning from each other and seek collaboration and teamwork. I feel like these two cards are trying to communicate something very similar. If you're able to extend your time and energy to whoever this person is that you're supposed to collaborate with, it will really restore the balance for a fruitful teamwork experience. So if this is a partner or potential partner, how can you extend your compassion towards them and help them in their journey in order to establish an opportunity for teamwork? for learning from each other. After that card came out, it was quite difficult to shuffle and get cards for the outcome. And eventually, these two came out, which is interesting for an outcome position. We have the Four of Cups and the Two of Wands. And again, I'm getting the sense that you're not supposed to know at all. You're not supposed to know what's going to happen exactly. Spirit is trying to keep that from you for your highest good because it's going to serve you to not know at this time. And so instead, we're getting a feel for where you're going to be energetically and that awareness, I think, will help you move forward. So you have the Four of Cups, and this means you're going to feel somewhat dissatisf dissatisfied in your situation in the near future. You're going to be looking elsewhere and wondering what else you can do, and, you know, I'm not so, not, I'm, I'm getting bored. I want to go somewhere. I want to do something else. I'm so tired of the day-to-day. -day. It's a card of dissatisfaction of the mundane, a feeling bored. And the thing is, she's focused on the cup she already has, but she's completely oblivious to the, the cup that is being offered to her by the universe because she's looking the other way. And so the reminder and advice when you get to this point is to look for that opportunity that you're wanting because it's actually right there. You don't have to remain in dissatis dissatisfaction or boredom. What you're looking for, you know, and you can go get it. You can take action on what you want. So that's where we get to the two of wands. You can look outwards and consider what you want in the future. Be selective about your desires and what you wish to experience. And this might just be a time where you look at the globe and you plan your next trip, right? You look out the window, consider your opportunities and possibilities. And if it's just that, great. That's totally fine begin to get an idea, or I guess in your near future, you're going to begin to have an idea of what it is that you really want, what's going to get you out of this stale bubble. And when you begin considering, be selective about your options. Really choose things that excite you, that are for your highest good, that will Bring something fruitful, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, you know? Really follow your excitement. And lastly, you 
held the Four of Swords. So, even in the near future, you want to really focus on retreat, healing, and regeneration. So, you're not done with this just yet. The Star card is still with you in a more practical sense. So the Four of Swords is telling you to take more naps, to really rest up, get enough sleep, to meditate daily, to tend to your own energy, and to not exhaust yourself so much. Retreat into your own space, spend more time in your own solitude, in silence, and just rest. Just regenerate your mind, body, and soul. And that will connect you to the synchronicities and the guidance and the next steps for what it is you desire and the cup that is being offered to you that you don't see just yet. So it sounds like, I know how you're feeling, you're probably feeling quite stagnant and it's like this reading kind of went in a circle. <laughs> so let's see what the other deck has in store for you. So we have the Osho deck here and I'm going to pull a card or two, possibly read to you the commentary. We're just asking for additional clarification or insight to this reading. The remaining puzzle pieces for us to better understand your situation and what you're looking for, what you need. Group one. Very interesting. So you have these two cards. The Five of Wands, which in this deck is called Totality. And then you have Inner Voice, which in the original tarot deck is the High Priestess. So you have the High Priestess again. I'm going to read to you both of these because... Yeah, I think, I think we'll find some gems in there. So first we have Five of Wands, Totality. These three women are high in the air, playful and free, yet alert and interdependent. In a trapeze act, Nobody can afford to be a little bit absent, even for a split second. And it is this quality of total attentiveness to the moment at hand that is represented here. We may feel there are too many things to do at once and get bogged down in trying to do a bit here, a bit there, instead of taking one task at a time and getting on with it. Or perhaps we think our task is boring because we've forgotten that it's not what you do, but how you do it that matters. Developing the knack of being total in responding to whatever comes as it comes is one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself. Taking one step through life at a time, giving each step your complete attention and energy, can bring a wondrous new vitality and creativity to all that you do. Now, Osho says, Every moment there is a possibility to be total. Whatsoever you are doing, be absorbed in it so utterly that the mind thinks nothing. It's just there. It's just a presence. More and more totality will be coming, 
and the taste of totality will make you more and more capable of being total. Try to see when you are not total. These are the moments which have to be dropped slowly, slowly. When you are not total, whenever you are in the head, thinking, brooding, calculating, cunning, clever, you're not total. Slowly, slowly slip out of those moments. It is just an old habit. Habits die hard, but they die certainly. If one persists, they die. <laughs> there were so many things that started clicking for me as I was reading this for you, and here are a couple of things. I love that it says here, Perhaps we think our task is boring because we've forgotten that it's not what you do, but how you do it that matters. And I think that really encompasses the entire reading. It's like we were going in circles because I think normally you expect divination and to kind of know what's going to happen. But what this reading was really, is really trying to get you to accept is that currently... Not a lot is happening in the 3D. It's not a lot that you can actually see. But energetically, in the 5D, everything is happening. And so it's really about how you do it that matters. How you're choosing to experience your reality. At the energetic level, there is so much happening for you. And so much to take in and to learn from. Now, let's read the commentary for Inner Voice. The Inner Voice speaks not in words, but in the wordless language of the heart. It is like an oracle who only speaks the truth. If it had a face, it would be like the face at the center of this card, alert, watchful, and able to accept both the dark and the light, symbolized by the two hands holding the crystal. The crystal itself represents the clarity that comes from transcending all dualities. The inner voice can also be playful as it dives deep into the emotions and emerges again to soar towards the sky, like two dolphins dancing in the waters of life. It is connected with the cosmos, through the crescent moon crown, and the earth as represented by the green leaves on the figure's kimono. There are times in our lives when too many voices seem to be pulling us this way and that, our very confusion in such situations is a reminder to seek silence and centering within. Only then are we able to hear our truth. Osho says, If you have found your truth within yourself, there is nothing more in this whole existence to find. Truth is functioning through you. When you open your eyes, it is truth opening his eyes. When you close your eyes, sorry. <laughs> when you close your eyes, it is truth that is closing his eyes. This is a tremendous meditation. If you can simply understand the device, you don't have to do anything. Whatever you're doing is being done by truth. You are walking, it is truth. You are sleeping, it is truth resting. You are speaking, it is truth speaking. You are silent, it is truth that is silent. This is one of the most simple meditation techniques. Slowly, slowly, everything settles by the simple formula. 
and then there is no need for the technique. When you are cured, you throw away the meditation, you throw away the medicine, then you live as truth, alive, radiant, contented, blissful, a song unto yourself. Your whole life becomes a prayer without any words, or better to say, a prayerfulness, a grace, a beauty which does not belong to our mundane world, a ray of light coming from the beyond into the darkness of our world. And now, one last thing. Let's pick a poem for you from the Fortunate Poetry Book. You got the Page of Cups. Do you have what it takes to look within? Even if you don't know where to begin. Explore the depths of this new spark, offer some patience, and it will blossom with luck. Signs swarm all around, but it's up to you to claim them as found. There you go. It's like the, um... Oh, my cards are over here. It's like the star card. Signs swarm all around, but it's up to you to claim them as found. And I think we will leave your reading here. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I wish you all the best, sending you so much love and light and healing. And also let me know how the reading went in the comments below. It's always lovely to hear from you. Sending love. If you chose group two, Citrine, then this reading is for you. So we're going to begin with your current energies. And then I'll ask for some advice then we will see the possible outcomes if you were to follow Spirit's advice. And for this reading, I'll be using the Light Seer's deck. Later on, I'm going to call on the Osho Sun Tarot deck. And lastly, we'll finish it off with the Fortunate Tarot Poetry book. So let's start with Current Energies, Group 2. Group two, Citrine. Okay, very interesting. really interesting because this card flipped out at the very beginning as I started shuffling. I put it back in, then it came out again, and I saw this card as well. It wanted to come out and it didn't, then it came out again. So, <laughs> Spirit's very persistent with these messages that it wants to communicate to you. So we'll start with your current energies. First you have the Ace of Cups. That's such a beautiful energy to start off with. The Ace of Cups is that feeling you get that you never had before. It's like an awakening of some sort, an emotional awakening, emotional renaissance spiritual awakening sometimes, just feeling flooded with positive emotions, feeling really light and lifted and renewed in some sense with hope. 
with light, um, with love, and it's just such a beautiful feeling to have every now and then. So perhaps something happened for you recently where maybe you released something quite heavy and that led you to discover more to yourself and this depth of emotion within yourself. Yeah, that's really what it's about. It's di discovering a new depth of, an em of emotion to yourself. New depth of spirit as well to yourself. So we're starting off on a really good note. Then you have the Two of Wands. The Two of Wands is about new possibilities wanting to discover opportunities to put yourself out there. This is knowing that the world is your oyster, you know, and there's so much to explore and experience. You're really just looking out the window to seek your next experiences. She's also got this globe over here a little van, so she's planning some travel, planning where to go next, and that's the energy that you're currently in as well, is you, you have plans to make. You feel like there are a lot of possibilities and opportunities out there. There are things to experience, so you're wanting to make some plans and to eventually follow through with them. So at this point, it's just recognizing that you have all of these possibilities and you're trying to be selective with them to decide your next course of action. And then you have the King of Swords in reverse, which is interesting. The King of Swords, when it's upright, really represents truth. And clarity. The sword's suit is about the air element and that deals very heavily with thought, the mental realm, communication, clarity, and insight. It's, you know, everything that we attribute to the third eye and also the crown. And when the King of Swords is reversed, it's a feeling of being blocked in these areas, not having full clarity over your authentic truth, not knowing how to communicate your authentic truth maybe, feeling unable to communicate clearly, uh, to have that mental clarity, and feeling unable to speak your truth, quite honestly. So, there's something to process here. There's a blockage in relations to... Oh, sorry, so I said the third eye, the crown, but this is also about the throat. <laughs> so, speaking your truth, expressing your authenticity, that has to do with the king of swords. So, there might be some blockage in one or all three of these chakras. I've been getting this a lot in reverse for sure because I'm struggling with my throat chakra a lot. So I can relate. <laughs> and let's look at advice that spirit has for you. These are really heavy cards. Big spiritual lessons. You have three major arcana cards as advice. So this is like a big deal. First you have the Strength card, then you have Justice, and then you have the Death card. Big energies. So if you don't know, the Major Arcana maps out the spiritual lessons you're supposed to experience in your life. And here you have three. Uh, so this is an important period for you spiritually. 
an important period for you to deepen self-awareness and learn more about yourself and align to your truth in this lifetime, your mission and purpose in this lifetime. The strength card is really asking you to embrace the blockage that you're experiencing. So one half of her face is the lion and that's supposed to represent her shadow side and the recognition that she is her shadow as much as she is the light. And so the shadow the, the strength card is about having the inner strength to extend compassion to these darker parts of you that are sometimes difficult to tame, that the ego would much rather repress, deny, shame, and judge. But if you really want inner strength, and if you want to learn the lesson that this card is presenting for you, it is having enough compassion, as this heart necklace suggests, to extend towards your shadow and integrate it as a part of yourself, as a part of your conscious identity. So this means whatever blockage you're experiencing with the reverse king of swords, bring up that repressed energy and that will often feel like you're revisiting a trauma, a deep emotional wound Um, an attachment wound maybe from early childhood and it's never going to feel good. Sometimes it's going to make you feel like you're losing control. But really, it's what's needed. You're not losing control. You are taking your power back. You are bringing up repressed energy and moving that energy again. That's how we take our power back. We restore flow in our system. And so this is deep trauma healing, shadow work, and not fearing what we've suppressed, but embracing it and allowing it to come back up. And then with the justice card, oh, isn't that nice? We have the shadow here as well, and there's a sort of balancing happening with, you know, the darkness and the light, as well as the scales, which is a classic symbol for the justice card. This card is in the energy of Libra, and it is literally all about restoring universal balance. So, releasing our karma and surrendering to the will of the universe, surrendering to the bigger picture and the little minute part that we play in it. And when this card shows up, it's telling you that the lessons you're going through right now are unavoidable, and it's actually all happening for you for the greater good of not just you in this lifetime, but everybody else that is affected by your ripple, you know, the butterfly effect. And so we really have to surrender to this restoration of justice, this release of karma, and uh, this return to universal balance. If you are truly seeking authenticity, connection to your true self and what you're really meant to do in this lifetime, this card is like, it's like a hallelujah, you know? This card tells you that you are going there, that the universe is actually helping you get you, helping you to go back to your, your authentic truth. If you are misaligned, if you are following your ego's desires and working in resistance to the universal will, then this card is difficult 
because letting go of karma will mean letting go of your ego, letting go of these material desires that you might have, these attachments, and that will be difficult. So you want to ask yourself honestly, are you really seeking your authentic truth and purpose? If you are, great. It's all happening for you. If you're not, this is going to feel like shit. <laughs> so that's just something to think about. And then you have the death card. And with every death, there is a rebirth. So every time you let go of something, you make space for the new. And that's what you have to keep in mind with this card. Some people find it scary, but it's actually one of my favorite cards because it truly feels like you're walking through a portal. Like you immediately shed the layer of an old self, a layer of your egoic identity, and all of a sudden you shift into being more true to yourself, feeling your eternal self, and being more self-aware than you've ever been. And so it really feels like walking through a portal and going through a complete transformation. So I invite you to welcome this fully. And it, I feel like it's inevitable because you have the justice card. So there's a lot of surrendering that's going to have to happen with you here with these really strong energies, surrender to the death of a layer of yourself. Surrender to the death of a part of your ego. Of course, your ego is not going to fall away completely. We need the ego to function in this life. But you will go through some sort of ego death that will help you integrate a part of your shadow and feel more deeply connected to your authentic truth and it'll give you the ability to better speak your truth. So then I asked about the possible outcome for you and first we have the Six of Swords and I think it's interesting to get this card in the outcome position because it's a very transitional card. The Six of Swords it's about retreating to calmer shores, really allowing yourself to be guided and led to calm, to safety. And so, again, there's some element of surrendering here, allowing yourself to be guided, allowing yourself to be led. At a certain point, you're not going to have to force yourself to do the shadow work, you know, the difficult, deep healing stuff. At a certain point, you're just going to have to let life take you to where it wants you to go. And so it might look like not doing any healing at all on the surface, but just knowing that something is shifting within you and internally and it's like living life just more mindfully on a day-to-day -day basis, but knowing things are shifting, things are changing. So I don't know if this is what you are going to experience right now. It seems like it's what's going to happen later on once you kind of create enough momentum with the strength card, the justice and death card. And that momentum will take you really far in deep healing. Along with that, I see the suitcase that she's holding here and how she's on a boat. She's in the water, so you might also be traveling soon. You might feel called to go somewhere else, like geographically, because you know, earlier when I was talking to you about this card, what stood out to me was the van and the globe. And so the two of these together indicate possible travel, possible change in your location, moving 
home, moving careers, moving countries. <laughs> so I know you've been thinking about it in some respects, and so you might actually allow yourself to act on it very soon. And then you have the King of Wands. And I think this is how you're going to be able to embody your truth. So the clarity might come from a King of Swords sort of energy mentally, you know, having the clarity, knowing what it is you want to communicate and express. But then when it comes to actually expressing it, it's going to hold a very fiery, passionate, wand-like energy. The wand suit holds the element of fire, and there's all this creative passion that comes with it. And the king of wands is somebody who is incredibly charismatic, who carries a lot of leadership qualities that make people want to trust him and follow him. And, um, you know, so he gets a lot of followers um, because of his incredibly magnetic personality. And so I feel like when you get to the point of expressing your authentic truth, it's really going to come through the element of fire, through creativity and passion and wanting to act on it, like literally take action on it. And it's going to come through charisma and uh, being magnetic with people, being magnetic in your self-expression, being passionate. And so very soon you're going to learn to embody the energy of the King of Wands. And this, might, this also suggests that you might meet somebody like this to offer you that reflection to learn to work with this energy. So you might meet somebody like this as a way of integrating the King of Wands energy. And lastly, you have the Ten of Swords. Very interesting in the outcomes position. The, the Ten of Swords... Again, this is one of those cards that people don't want to get. Sometimes they think it's like one of the most negative cards in the deck for me because I love shadow work and I always advocate for it. This is one of my favorite cards once again because this is the culmination that you get to with the mind is you recognize there is no need to hold on to so much mental attachment, to hold on to so much thought and mind-created problems. And when you get to the 10, it's like a complete letting go. It's like, this is too much and it literally makes no sense for me to be holding on to so much mentally. So I'm just going to surrender and let it all go. And the birds fly away. <laughs> so... The Ten of Swords is about surrendering your thoughts, surrendering your mental limitations, mind-created problems, surrendering the ego mind, and really sitting in a spacious openness in your body to allow yourself to feel your experiences rather than just think them. It's such a beautiful, soft energy, and I think this image illustrates it beautifully. So, you know, what would it feel like for you to be this woman right here, feeling the wind blowing in her face, watching the birds fly away, standing at, I think this is like the cliff of an edge, the edge of a cliff. <laughs> What would it feel like to be this woman in this image? And that's the energy that you're going to soon embody. And I think that's beautiful because this tells me 
along with the Six of Swords, another surrendering sort of energy. This tells me that you will have integrated these major spiritual lessons. If you get to this, you will then know that you've conquered these spiritual lessons. Okay, now I'm going to shuffle the Osho Zen Tarot deck and pick a card or two for you. Then we're going to read the commentary. I love the commentaries for this deck. I think they're so poignant. Group two. You have breakthrough and guidance. Let's start with breakthrough. predominance of red in this card indicates at a glance that its subject is energy, power, and strength. The brilliant glow emanates from the solar plexus, or center of power, on the figure, and the posture is one of exuberance and determination. All of us occasionally reach a point when enough is enough, At such times, it seems we must do something, anything, even if it later turns out to be a mistake, to throw off the burdens and restrictions that are limiting us. If we don't, they threaten to suffocate and cripple our very life energy. If you are now feeling that enough is enough, Allow yourself to take the risk of shattering the old patterns and limitations that have kept your energy from flowing. In doing so, you'll be amazed at the vitality and empowerment this breakthrough can bring to your life. Osho says, To transform breakthroughs, to transform breakdowns into breakthroughs is the whole function of a master. The psychotherapist simply patches you up. That is his function. He is not there to transform you. You need a meta-psychology, the psychology of the Buddhas. It is the greatest adventure in life to go through a breakdown consciously. It is the greatest risk because there is no guarantee that the breakdown will become a breakthrough. It does become but these things cannot be guaranteed. Your chaos is very ancient. For many, many lives, you have been in chaos. It is thick and dense. It is almost a universe in itself. So when you go into it with your small capacity, of course there is danger. But without facing this danger, Nobody has ever become integrated. Nobody has ever become an individual, indivisible. Zen or meditation is the method that will help you go through the chaos, through the dark night of the soul, balanced, disciplined, and alert. The dawn is not far away, but before you can reach the dawn, the dark night has to be passed through. And as the dawn come closer, the night will become darker. Oh, there is so much that I'm like I'm connecting the dots now and it's so beautiful. There 
couple of things that I want to mention, which we just read. And there are all these restrictions within us that limit us, and it suffocates and cripples our very life energy. And that really is the blockage that we were picking up on earlier with the reverse king of swords, is it cripples our life energy, these blockages. And if you feel like enough is enough, you really have to take the risk of working with your shadow as, you know, scary as that might be, because you are bringing up all of this dense and thick repressed energy for many lifetimes before this one. But that is what shatters old patterns and limitations that have kept your energy from flowing. So it really requires a big risk. It requires that you go through breakdowns consciously in order to see them as breakthroughs later on. And it's from important to remember that your karma didn't just start in this lifetime, but your chaos, as Osho says it, is very ancient. For many, many lives, you have been in chaos. It's thick. It's dense. But the good news is the universe is really convening for that to end for you in this lifetime. It really wants you to restore balance within yourself and to let go of all of those karmic patterns from the past. There is danger in that because you have to go through your breakdowns but consciously. <laughs> and that's the only way to really integrate as this oh, as this image suggests. That's the only way to integrate your power. And oh my god. Oh look at that. This is so beautiful. In the strength card, we have the lion that represents the shadow side we are afraid to connect with, that we fear we cannot tame. And would you look at that? In the king of wands, we also have the lion. But in this energy, the lion is honored. The lion is the creative force, the king of the jungle that makes this man so powerful, magnetic, and charismatic. And so this lion is your creative energy. You're currently fearing it. You see it as your shadow, but it's your very life force. It's what gives you meaning in this lifetime. It's how you take your power back. So that is just beautiful. And one more connection that I was able to make with what we just read earlier is... Let me see if I can pull it back up. Usho says here, The dawn is not far away, but before you can reach the dawn, the dark night has to be passed through. And as the dawn comes closer, the night will become darker. And... That is actually the illustration for the Rider Waits version of the Ten of Swords. If you're familiar with tarot, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's like a man who's lying on the battlefield with ten swords on his back, and behind him is a new dawn. You can sort of see dawn far away in the distance rising light coming in, but he's still very much in the darkness with ten swords on his back. And so just like Osho said, before the dawn can come in, the night usually appears very dark. We have to go through the dark night of the soul before we can receive our light fully. And so I think that's why you got the ten of swords as your in the outcomes position, is that it's trying to tell you that a new dawn is coming, 
but you really have to surrender to the darkness in order to welcome it. That's just beautiful. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> you have one more card, and that is guidance. So I'm going to read that to you now. And this is the Three of Pentacles. The angelic figure with rainbow-colored wings on this card represents the guide that each of us carries within. Like the second figure in the background, we may sometimes be a little reluctant, reluctant to trust this guide when it comes to us, because we are so accustomed to taking our cues from the outside rather than from the inside. The truth of your own deepest being is trying to show you where to go right now. And when this card appears, it means you can trust the inner guidance you are being given. It speaks in whispers, and sometimes we hesitate, not knowing if we have understood rightly. But the indication is clear. In following the inner guidance, you will feel more whole, more integrated, as if you are moving outward from the very center of your being. If you go with it, this beam of light will carry you exactly where you need to go. Osho says, You have to look for guidance because you don't know your inner guide is hidden inside you. You have to find the inner guide and that's what I call your witness. That's what I call your dharma. That's what I call your intrinsic Buddha. You have to awaken that Buddha and your life will shower blessings, benediction. Your life will become so radiant with good, with godliness, more than you can possibly conceive. It is almost like light. Your room is dark. Just bring light in. Even a small candle will do, and the whole darkness disappears. And once you have a candle, you know where the door is. You don't have to think, where is the door? Only blind people think about where the door is. People who have eyes, and the light is there, they don't think. Have you ever thought, where is the door? You simply get up and go out. You never get a single thought to where the door is. You don't start groping for the door or hitting your head against the wall. You simply see, and there's not even a flicker of thought. You simply go out. I like the metaphors in this about the light and the dark. You know, with shadow work, we're often afraid of losing ourselves in the darkness. But you want to keep in mind that what you're really doing when you're meeting with these shadow aspects of yourself and bringing up repressed energy is you are shining the light of consciousness onto your own darkness. And so it's like bringing a candle into a room that's fully dark and then seeing the door, seeing the way out. So all you need is that little bit of consciousness or awareness and that shines a light onto the darkness and it dissolves your repressions. That gives you a way out of your problems and blockages. So, again, I'm going back to the Ten of Swords because here he says, you don't start groping for the door or hitting your head against the wall. You simply see, and there's not even a flicker of thought. 
you simply go out. So there's not even a flicker of thought when you get it. There's just a complete surrendering. You just let go and you trust. You trust in your inner guidance. You trust in the flow, the process, the universe. So it's like this. You just, there's no thought. You let the thoughts go. And you just trust. This is a really powerful reading and it's so beautiful and I love how much shadow work is in this one. <laughs> if you don't follow me on Instagram, I've actually been posting quite a lot about shadow work on there so feel free to join me there if you'd like to learn more about shadow work. And now I want to end with one poem for you from the Fortunate Tarot Poetry book. So you have strength with the power of eternity above you and the solidity of earth below you. You walk the path of self-assurance with grace. The tough tasks seem like light work to you. How did you get this way? Trust in yourself, in your deeper knowing. Think like this. They come like this. I love that. And that is the end of your reading. I hope that you found it helpful. I hope that you enjoyed this. Let me know how it went in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. Sending you so much love, so much light, and healing. Take care. If you chose group three, Amethyst, then this reading is for you. Okay, group three, so we will begin with your current energies. And I'm going to be using the Light Seer's deck for this. We'll ask about your current energies any advice that spirit has for you, and possible outcomes if you were to follow through with the advice. Then we're going to call upon, then we're going to call upon the Osho San Tarot deck and the Fortunate Tarot Poetry deck, Poetry book. It's late <laughs> and I'm tired. <laughs> Okay, we'll start with your current energies. Group three, Amethyst. Group three, Amethyst. Okay, group three. Okay, group three. So for your current energies, we're going to begin with the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups suggests that you're currently feeling somewhat dissatisfied, maybe bored with your situation. Things are feeling mundane and overly ordinary, and so you're constantly looking elsewhere, trying to distract yourself from the boredom, and it's like this girl looking over at her three cups and being dissatisfied with them, but being completely oblivious to what is being offered to her by the universe, there's this kind of portal that she could access, but She's unaware of it. She doesn't see it. She doesn't know how to get there, even though 
part of her knows that that's what she wants and that's why she feels so bored here. And so it's like something is being offered to you, but you're unaware of it can't seem to tap into it for some reason and so you remain in your situation bored, um, lifeless, dissatisfied. Let's look into that some more. So then you have the moon card and the moon is a major arcana energy and so there is a spiritual life lesson to be learned from this energy and the main thing that I'm getting here is that there are a lot of mental illusions in your mind right now as a result of fear and that's preventing you from seeing clearly from seeing your situation that could better benefit you so you're kind of holding yourself back with the fears, with the anxieties and illusions that your mind is creating for you. For example, you know, I think like a um, very common one in relationships is fearing if somebody is being dishonest with you, not being truthful, if they're holding something back from you and you don't don't get the, you don't see the whole picture and, and that kind of gets you into the story and so that's just an example it doesn't have to apply to you it might apply to one or two of you but um, that's just an example of how sometimes the mind can play games with us and create these very deceitful stories that limit us and impede us more than it serves us so what sort of illusions are you giving into that your mind has created for you? Can you tap into the emotion of these mental fears? Because fear is a very visceral experience as well. Can you tap into the feeling in your chest, in your gut, and work with that instead in a somatic felt sense way rather than the stories because the mind created these stories and the mind's going not going to help you solve it. <laughs> you can't resolve problems at the same level as you created them, right? You then have the reverse nine of pentacles. Now when this card is upright, it's about really embracing your independence and feeling completely abundant in your own solitude. So the feeling that we want to have when this card is upright is being like this woman, enjoying her time with her pet in her garden with these nine pentacles. Pentacles represent the material realm and physical aspects of life. And to have nine of pentacles is to feel really abundant in this physical world on the material plane. And so you aren't tapped into this energy just yet. It's somewhat distorted for you in the sense that you fear being entirely independent. You fear being alone. There's a fear of loneliness. So this could apply to a relationship. Maybe there is some codependency and that leaves you wanting to cling to them and really fearing what might happen if they're not in your life. And that's a really limiting place to be, right? So currently you're feeling codependent, you're afraid of what solitude and aloneness might mean. So you're immediately associating aloneness with loneliness. And it doesn't have to be that way. Then you have the King of Swords. And 
when the king of swords is in its highest form, he is a man with a lot of clarity, with a lot of truth and insight to share and express. But he's also a man who's very much in his head. And that's kind of like the ordinary form of the King of Swords that we can meet in, in life. And so maybe you're dealing with somebody in your life who's very mentally oriented, who's quite detached from their emotions, maybe even disembodied and dissociated from their emotions. They don't like to express their emotions very much. They have a tendency to suppress and deny how they're feeling. They have a tendency to overanalyze and intellectualize their experiences, which if this is somebody you're in a relationship with, that can leave you feeling quite empty um, and unappreciated. That can leave you feeling insecure about your emotions because you don't know how they're feeling. They're never expressing how they're feeling in emotive words. They're always being analytical and overly rational, which makes you feel disconnected. So I feel like we're talking about a relationship here where there are some fears and codependency and dissatisfaction. Now let's look into advice. Group two got this as well. You got the strength card and the death card. So First, let's start with strength. This is a major arcana card. So again, it's asking you to really embody this energy and learn from this energy. This is a major spiritual lesson that you can take away from your current situation. And the strength is all about shadow work. This is learning to embrace the part of you that you sometimes fear that is difficult to tame, that is wild and dangerous even, you know, in some ways. And the strength card invites you to compassionately attend to your shadow side, to not try to suppress shame or judge this part of you, but to actually bring it up and to shine your light on it and integrate it as a part of yourself. So this woman recognizes that she is both her ego and her shadow. She is both her light and her darkness. And that is true inner strength. That is true compassion. And the advice here is you will never be able to com extend compassion and understanding and safety to this person that you're dealing with until you can do that for yourself. So whatever insecurities they're triggering within you, well, that tells you what you need to work on in this moment. And when you can process your stuff internally, you'll have better agency in working with them, in extending understanding, compassion, and kindness to them so that they feel safe enough to explore their emotions and inner reality as well. So your strength in this relationship will really come from your ability to work with your own shadow, and that will pave way for your person to feel safer with you, to feel like they are able, that they can, and perhaps should explore their own shadows as well. And that takes us to the death card. Now this is a card that 
sounds scary to some people, but it's really one of my favorite cards in all of tarot. And it's because when we have a death, we also experience a rebirth. When we let go of the old, we make space for the new. And so this card is about complete transformations that feel like you're walking through a portal. You're letting go of this shell and exterior layer and you're entering a deeper truths about yourself. You're learning to embody your authenticity more. And so it's just such a powerful card that I wish every everybody could receive all the time. <laughs> Because we are continuously shedding old layers, right? We want to. We want to let go of the old in order to embrace the new. We want to better embody our authentic truths and live a life that's meaningful. And so that's what this card is about. If you can do the shadow work and attend to your own insecurities and fears as these two cards suggest then you can experience a death of an old self, an ego death that isn't serving the relationship you're in. By the way, this doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. I'm leaving it open-ended because I think it can apply to family as well, to colleagues even, and to friends of course. So see how it applies to you. But um, with whoever you're dealing with, if you can do your own shadow work and let go of a part of you that isn't serving you anymore, if you can let go of the codependency, the fear of being alone, and let go of the stories and illusions that the mind creates to deceit you, then you can tap into your deeper authentic truths and really pave way for a more harmonious relationship that serves you better as well as the other person. Lastly, you have the Seven of Cups for advice. And this card is asking you to make up your mind. <laughs> the Seven of Cups is it's like being really undecided and that's a very difficult place to be. It doesn't feel good for anybody. So rather than being this guy, you know, being conflicted, you're encouraged to really tap into your deepest values and your emotional guidance system in order to understand what it is that you truly want. Do you want to continue to nurture this relationship? Do you see value in it? If so, do those values precede everything else? Is, are these values deep enough for you to keep putting an effort in this relationship? If so, life will flow accordingly and give you the fruits you're looking for in this relationship. Of course, if you put in the effort. But if you don't see value in this relationship and what it might offer you, then you can also let it go and honor your deeper values and live a life that is more fruitful and fulfilling. At the end of the day, you just have to make up your mind. These cups can all bring to you really amazing experiences. It's really up to you to decide which one you want to be involved with in this lifetime. So make up your mind, and there's no right or wrong answer. It's literally what feels good for you. If you have a nagging feeling when you're considering a certain choice that probably isn't the right one for you, 
even if it sounds logical, even if people have convinced you that is the right choice, if you don't feel right within, if you feel like, oh, I wish life could give me something better, then it probably isn't it. You want to go with a choice that leaves you feeling reassured, that leaves you feeling worthy and deserving, that makes you feel happy and excited and joyful. And now we go to outcomes. This gets me so excited. You have the lovers. How beautiful is that? So this represents a realignment and restored harmony in this relationship. And again, this doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. This can be with a family member or friend. This is about choosing to be in love, as in choosing to embody your authentic truths, to walk the path towards authenticity, even if it means challenging societal norms and pushing away all else. This is doing everything in the name of truth, in the name of love, in the name of authenticity. So, in a relationship, this is learning to see each other as they are, but recognizing the work that goes into that, because we first see each other as reflections of ourselves, and we work through those projections until we can see them as they are and love them as they are. So this is just beautiful. You're going to realign to your authentic truths. And with that, you're actually, interestingly enough, going to focus quite a lot on work, on your career, or creative project of some sort. You're going to bring back all the attention that you had dispersed or that you might have put on this person, you're going to bring that attention back to yourself and focus on yourself and um, focus on the material realm. So ex extending your wealth, becoming more abundant, becoming more skillful. You're going to focus on yourself and your own skills and talents. So I really like that. You're bringing all of your energy back to yourself, taking your power back to strengthen your own talents and abundance. And then you have the hermit. So this doesn't mean you're going to end up alone <laughs> if you're inquiring about a relationship. This simply means that you're going to get in touch with yourself on a deeper level. You're going to learn to embrace aloneness and recognize that aloneness doesn't mean loneliness. They're not the same thing. When we are alone, sometimes we feel the most connected and complete we can ever feel, right? You don't have to feel lonely when you are in your own solitude. And this card is about that. It's finding the light within and feeling so much inner connection that you don't need distractions outside of you for fear of being lonely. So I really like that for you. This is healing codependency, regaining independence, regaining trust in yourself, and feeling connection with your inner light, inner wisdom. And really all I'm seeing here is you aligning to your truths and your authenticity and taking all of that power back to yourself and choosing yourself above all else. And of course you can also do this with the other person involved as well, right? You know, that person is really in the relationship for your highest good. 
if they're looking out for your best interest, then they can respect this. They would probably urge you to find your own independence, to find your power and your spark, and to follow your purpose, your mission, right? To be authentic, to be your true self. So, again, the choice is yours. You don't have to leave this person. You can be with this person, but it depends on your and their willingness to do the work. Okay, group three. Now I'm going to pick a card or two from the Osho Zen Tarot deck, and I'm going to read the commentary out to you later. Group three. Okay. So you have the Four of Wands participation along with the Rebel. Interesting combination. So we'll start with participation first. Each figure in this mandala holds the left hand up in an attitude of receiving and the right hand down in an attitude of giving. The whole circle creates a tremendous energy field that takes on the shape of the double dorje, the Tibetan symbol for the thunderbolt. The mandala has a quality like that of the energy field that forms around a Buddha where all the individuals taking part in the circle make a unique contribution to create a unified and vital whole. It is like a flower whose wholeness is even more beautiful than the sum of its parts, at the same time enhancing the beauty of each individual petal. You have an opportunity to participate with others now, making your contribution towards creating something greater and more beautiful than each of you could manage alone. Your participation will not only nourish you, but also contribute something precious to the whole. Osho says, Have you ever seen night going? Very few people even become aware of things which are happening every day. Have you ever seen the evening coming? The midnight and its song? The sunrise and its beauty? We are all behaving like blind people. In such a beautiful world, we are all living in small ponds of our own misery. It is familiar, so even if somebody wants to pull you out, you struggle. You don't want to be pulled out of your misery of your suffering. Otherwise, there is so much joy all around. You just have to be aware of it and to become a participant, not a spectator. Philosophy is speculation. Zen is participation. Participate in the night leaving. Participate in the evening coming. Participate in the stars and participate in the clouds. Make participation your lifestyle, and the whole existence becomes such a joy, such an ecstasy. You could not have dreamt of a better universe. So I feel like this message is really trying to get you to realize what a sacred opportunity this relationship is presenting for you, that in your active participation with what's come up, you can not only nourish yourself, but bring forth something for the other person. This is a healing opportunity for both of you. As much as it might not feel like it right now, it's brought up insecurities and fears and dissatisfaction, but this is such an excellent 
opportunity to deepen self-awareness and to open up for deeper connection. So, do you see the opportunity for participation? And are you willing to contribute something to it to integrate the whole? Now we have the Rebel. This is actually a card that comes up quite a lot whenever I do these readings for you guys. So it's definitely an energy that our collective community taps into quite a lot, which is awesome. <laughs> so the Rebel is this. The powerful and authoritative figure in this card is clearly the master of his own destiny. On his shoulder is an emblem of the sun, and the torch he holds in his right hand symbolizes the light of his own hard-won truth. Whether he is wealthy or poor, the rebel is really an emperor because he has broken the chains of society's repressive conditioning and opinions. He has formed himself by embracing all the colors of the rainbow, emerging from the dark and formless roots of his unconscious past, and growing wings to fly into the sky. His very way of being is rebellious, not because he is fighting against anybody, or anything, but because he has discovered his own true nature and is determined to live in accordance with it. The eagle is a spirit animal, a messenger between earth and sky. The rebel challenges us to be courageous enough to re take responsibility for who we are and to live our truth. Osho says, people are very afraid, very afraid of those who know themselves. They have a certain power, a certain aura, and a certain magnetism, a charisma that can take alive young people out from the traditional imprisonment. The enlightened man cannot be enslaved. That is the difficulty and he cannot be imprisoned. Every genius who has known something of the inner is bound to be a little difficult to be absorbed. He is going to be an upsetting force. The masses don't want to be disturbed. Even though they may be in misery, they are in misery, but they are accustomed to the, mister, to the misery. And anybody who is not miserable looks like a stranger. The enlightened man is the greatest stranger in the world. He does not seem to belong to anybody. No organization confines him. No community. No society. No nation. I just love this so much, and I have to tell you that it is exactly what the lovers is trying to communicate, and I know that that might not be your first thought, right? Because for us, when we hear the lovers, we just think of true love, beautiful romantic love, but really it's about breaking the chains of societal's repressive conditioning, challenging societal norms, and really choosing yourself out of love, out of truth, out of the need, the desperate need for authenticity, for truth. So these two cards actually carry very similar energy. You're really being asked to know who you are and to live out your truth, whatever that may be. And that can involve this person. That can involve this person 
might not involve this person, but it's really up to you and how well you know yourself. And it's also encouraging you to not listen to the advice of people around you as much as they are well-meaning. They're probably simply echoing things that we've been conditioned to believe from society and that can stray you from your truth. Only you know what you want and what's going to satisfy you. Nobody else. So don't give in to societal expectations Listen to yourself and pave your own way. And now, let's pick a poem from the Fortunate Poetry Book, and we'll end it there. A partnership ensues. The flow of love is from you, through and through. Reach for common ground, and watch how abundance comes in twos. Words and the will to stay loyal are what keeps this union in view. Align your insights, and give this fusion its deserved debut. Beautiful. And that is the end of your reading. By the way, since I mentioned shadow work here, I want to let you know that I started posting regularly on Instagram and I share a lot about shadow work there. So if you don't follow me there, check it out and maybe join me. And I also have a course out now all about shadow work because I truly believe that's the best way I can help you. Um, so this is a course that is like a comprehensive collection of everything that I've learned on my journey that I believe works within the healing and spiritual process, um, which I want to share with you. So you can click on the link below to check that out. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that the reading was helpful. Let me know how it went in the comments. And I'm sending you so much love, so much healing, and so much light. Take care, and I will talk to you very soon.